CBS 2 News starts right now with breaking news. Wake up. Let's go. We begin with a controversy exploding about this video obtained by the CBS 2 investigators. It just now surfaced, even though the man you see here, Eric Lurie, died after being in the custody of Joliet Police nearly six months ago. It's another example of police departments across the country holding back on critical videos that raise questions about misconduct. Only in this case, it was their own training officer who blew the whistle. CBS 2 investigator Dave Savini spoke exclusively to that officer about breaking the blue wall of silence. Erica, the video he showed me is disturbing. Another black man in the hands of police who ends up dead. This officer, who still works here and blew the whistle anyway, well, in our conversation, what he had to say was remarkable. So he was suffocating. In my opinion, anybody would suffocate in that situation. What was your reaction when you saw that video for the first time? And seeing that video was so disturbing, I cried. Every day having to live with that was a hard thing, knowing that this administration was probably going to do nothing about it. This is the cop who blew the whistle on what he calls a five-month cover-up by his department. Sergeant Javier Esqueda sounded the alarm about two videos that captured the last moments of Eric Lurie's life. And you, a 27-year veteran, a sergeant, blows the whistle. Why did you think that was important? It's important for people to know that things like that can't be tolerated by police departments. One video was recorded by an outside camera. It shows patrol officers and supervisors watching it happen. But this camera inside the squad, seven minutes long, is the most critical in capturing how Lurie was treated, especially during a crucial span where his airway appeared to be obstructed, lasting one minute and 38 seconds. It all started when this sergeant, Doug May, in plain clothes and a hooded sweatshirt, enters the vehicle and strikes Lurie in the face. Hey, wake up, bitch. What was the hardest part about watching that that you saw? The hardest part of watching that video was watching another fellow sergeant slap him and calling him a bitch on that video, then going straight for his nose, cutting off his airway. When his nose was pinched and held tight shut, what was happening to him at that moment? He's suffocating. I'm no doctor, but if you put your finger on your nose or your hand on your nose that way, and you can't breathe. He says Lurie appeared to be chewing something at first, and with his hands cuffed behind him, starts to close his eyes and become lethargic during his ride to the Joliet police station. Possibly a bag of drugs in his mouth, says Esqueda. He also says officers were trying to get him to open, open his mouth, mouth, using a maneuver to cut off his air supply. That's been written in the law for a couple of years. You can't do that anymore to try to get him to cough up any kind of drugs in their system. He says the baton inserted into his mouth and toward his throat was also wrong. Was that a violation of police procedure? Yes, I absolutely think so. I can't think of anywhere where I was taught CPR or in the academy where you slap a man, call him a bad name, cut off his airway, go for his throat. Lurie, a 37-year-old father of three, was pronounced dead later that night at a hospital. But Sergeant Esqueda believes he was already dead. You can see one officer eventually heads to the squad with a defibrillator. There obviously is a lot wrong with that video. And if anybody doesn't feel any pain by watching that, there's something wrong with them. He says he got the courage to show his face in this interview after seeing the story we broke last night about Lurie's widow, who didn't know videos existed until we told her we got a tip. What do you know? I don't know anything. I don't know absolutely nothing. I can't get any answers from anyone. Nicole Lurie says all she knew was what she saw, the final moments of her husband in the ICU. When I arrived to the hospital, I seen my husband laying there on a ventilator in the emergency room, jerking and tears coming out of his eyes. For that minute and 30 plus, minute and 38 seconds, what do you feel while you watch that? Disgust, pain, because I think about what if that was one of my relatives? What if that was my seven-year-old son? 
that's somebody else's husband, someone else's son, someone else's grandchild. I was always taught, look at people, treat people on the street as if they were your family, how you would want your family to be treated by the police. And while Eric Lurie's family continues to grieve, they still want answers as to what contributed to his death. In Joliet, Dave Savini, CBS2 Investigators, back to you. As Dave mentioned, he first alerted Lurie's widow to the existence of this video as part of a CBS2 investigation that aired last night at 10. To see that story, download the CBS Chicago app and look for it in the investigator section.